Once you have all of your RTL SDR command line tools installed in Windows, Mac, or Linux, you are now ready to connect your device and test to make sure everything is working. The first test that we're going to do is the RTL underscore test, and we'll put a P flag, which allows us to check the sampling rate offset by parts per million. So it reads a bunch of samples and then it will give us a PPM error. So press enter, it should find your device and we can see that we're sampling at 2.048 uh, mega samples per second. And now we can see after 10 seconds it gives us a current PPM. I'm going to press control C to get out and now I have a samples per million loss. So the, the longer we do this, the more samples and the more uh, the closer average we will get to an error. We could enter that number into cubic SDR and adjust for our samples per million lost. The next command that we're going to check is the RTL SDR command. If we press enter, we have a bunch of different flags in order to change different defaults. If you're having trouble finding your SDR, a tip would be to see if it's on a different device. Mine is set to zero, but this reads as a USB in two different devices. So just double check and make sure that if it can't read on device zero, then put flag D1. Once we know the command line tool is working and we get a bunch of options, we're going to test and just make sure that everything is working appropriately. So. I'd like to set a frequency. I will press hyphen F and then type in my frequency. And I need to make sure that it is in the millions. 121900123. The next thing I can do is set my gain. So I'll use a gain of about 40. We can see our sample gain values up top here. I can now set my sample rate, and that's going to be output to a data file. So this will be my test. And now it's reading samples. I can see my gain has changed, my frequency has changed, and my sampling rate matches. It's taken a few seconds of data, and I can check underneath my file structure and we can see the test.dat is right here. They're pretty big files so make sure not to let it run too long. I was getting a lot of good reception on 121.67 and this is a AM frequency for me. Once I have my frequency, my gain set, my sample rate set, I'm going to press enter. Once I'm done, I can see again, there's the sample that I've used. My next step is to open GNU Octave, and I'm going to set a variable D to load file. This file must be in the same folder structure, so load file.m sits within the same folder as my data file. So now I can pick the file, and if you don't need, want to type, you can copy your selection and paste it right in. And let's let it pull the matrix, and it will assign D to that matrix. Once you see all of your I values, you can just press Q, and we can see that the D variable is now loaded into GNU Octave. I'm going to test and just look at my whole spectrum. So to look at the data, we want 2,000 blocks of 1024 samples, and if we multiply those together, we'll get the 2.048 mega samples. If I use the message command, 
I'm taking variable D that I just placed all of that data in. Then I'm going to break this down into a XY plot. So now I've got all of my samples, a nice column set, so I can use this. So let's create a variable. We'll call this DS. see that DS is loaded and you should get a pop-up for your figure. You can zoom in but it's very difficult to see with all of the noise and this looks very similar to the Cubic SDR waterfall. We can see some of our signals in here. So if we'd like we can zoom in on areas but it's very difficult to see. So I'm going to close this and Let's take the spectrum and plot column 1000. We can go back and look at 365. And we can actually see the signal change. This is a bias signal and we can see where the voice is being transmitted. It's still a little fuzzy. There's a lot of noise in here.